So we're talking about networks, and networks can be a pretty uh, big topic. It could just sort of unravel into more and more and more subjects because networks means that with a network, a network being, you know, if we define a network, a network is two or more devices connected together. And so if uh, we are talking about the subject of networks, and ne a network is two or more devices connected together, we could really talk about so many different things. <laughs> because uh, anytime we have two or more devices connected together, we've got a network. And so this is like, you know, uh, talking about the applications of networks is what we're looking at here right in the beginning of uh, our discussion of networks. You know, we've already looked at some applications of networks, but I just wanted to check out a few more. And uh, again, this is something which could just expand into all kinds of different areas, but I'm just going to talk about some of the ones that are most prevalent and most interesting to me. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, in various computer concept books, they have uh, um, monitoring systems as one of the things that's talked about in networks. And, uh, you know, that's some of the stuff we've already looked at, like LoJack and OnStar and tracking speed and tracking location of of items, but then there are also medical monitors, right? Where a medical monitor is connected somehow, maybe via the cellular network, or you know, and so you could wear a little device where you could press it if you need help, or if your you know uh, physical condition starts to deteriorate, it's monitoring that, and it could transmit that data to uh, medical professionals, or it could be something that you wear and it records everything. Uh, or records whatever it's meant to record of your physical condition. And then later that gets plugged into other devices and the data gets taken off of it. So medical monitors is something else which sometimes gets talked about in uh, computer concept textbooks. And then there are also sensor networks, sensor networks, as in like, you know, networks that can sense stuff. So the inside of shipping container, what's the temperature of it? And uh, broadcasting that temperature, you could have like a, a whole yard full of, uh, of shipping containers with a device inside monitoring the temperature in each shipping container. And then, you know, the, the temperature inside each container would be broadcast back to a central computer where the computer would be able to know the temperature of all the containers or whatever, whatever. Sensor networks, uh, there's more sensor networks. We're going to look at it. I'm kind of interested about the medical emergency uh, thing which you can wear, medical emergency necklace, all right, alert, diabetic, so, uh, um, button, all right, so something where you could push a button, I don't know, that looks like one of them right there, maybe that's one there, too, medical emergency, so yeah, right there, if you fell, help, I can't get up, you could push that button, <laughs> help, I can't get up, and then you'd be connected to people. So that's kind of a, a cool little thing. Uh, so RFID, that's uh, something uh, I think we've mentioned uh, before in the last couple of weeks. But RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. Radio Frequency Identification. And it's basically this little chip which uh, will broadcast some data uh, to uh, something that knows how to read the information on it. So a transmitter receiver a receiver would be able to read the information on whatever is on this chip. And uh, that information could just be, you know, a series of numbers or it could be anything, whatever kind of information you want to store in it. So if you were to put RFID into different things, you could monitor those things. So a lot of times RFID will be used like with shipping containers or with shipping crates or packaging or in warehouses. And so they just slap an RFID on a pallet with stuff on it. And I've already mentioned this before. And then they'll know when that's in the warehouse, when it's out of the warehouse, where it is in the warehouse. And so that would all be part of like RFID monitoring or RFID tracking. And uh, yeah, just all kinds of possibilities here. And, um, you know, uh, they also have RFIDs now in, in like credit cards. And so um, these are just more pictures of RFID. We already saw this actually. It's all ringing a bell for me. There's like the barcode and everything like that. But here are credit cards with RFID inside of them, right? So you no longer have to swipe the magnetic stripe and take the credit card out of your wallet because we all know that that is so much effort. Oh my gosh, such a pain to take the credit card out of the wallet. Now you can just swipe your wallet right over a reader with the credit card still in it. So you just swipe it over this reader and it would read the number, right? Because the little RFID chip would transmit to this receiver 
Uh, this is the credit card number right here. And if you have that little symbol right there, your credit card's got that RFID deal on it. It's got the RFID deal on it. Some people say, hey, this is a, a trouble for thieves because now a thief with the right technology be able to just swipe your credit card number by uh, scanning your wallet in your pocket. But um, whether or not that's uh, something to be concerned about, you know, no more is it a concern to me than giving my credit card to a waiter or to uh, a bus person, a busser in a restaurant. Because as soon as you give your credit card to anybody, like at a restaurant, and I'll be right back with this, they could go back into the waiter station, pull out their cell phone, snap a picture of the front and the back, and they got all the information they need to start using your credit card. So, uh, yeah, if people want your credit card number, they can get it in a variety of ways, including the ways we already use our credit cards. Uh, so here are some just more pictures of RFID credit cards. Um, so uh, wireless sensor networks are just, you know, spatially distributed autonomous sensors to monitor physical or environmental conditions such as temperature, sound, pressure, and to cooperatively pass their data through the network to a main location. And some examples of that, air quality, air pollution, forest fire detection, landslide detection, water quality monitoring, natural disaster prevention, you know, um, machine health, data logging, industrial sense and control, water waste, wastewater monitoring. So all kinds of, uh, you know, uses for wireless sensor networks. Um, yeah, you, you, you're, you're, you're only limited by your imagination with what you might be able to do with this, this kind of stuff. Um, farmers, right? Like, let's put this all over our, have little sensors all over our, our farm telling us the moisture in the soil. Right? And so that would then connect with the system, which does the watering. So when the moisture got to, uh, you know, when it was dry, it would just add the water where it needed to be added. Like that, I don't know if that's out there or what that would cost. But, you know, particularly in California, which is starting to have a water crisis, that would be an amazing, probably multi-million, if not billion-dollar business right there. <laughs> Maybe I should stop recording and go do it. Because, uh, you know, then your entire system would just deliver the right amount of water to the right place and not waste any water. I think that's a great idea, actually. There's this place at NOAA, and NOAA stands for the National, what, Government Shutdown. Wow, that's awesome. So the NOAA.gov is National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. I have no idea why our government shut down. Bipartisan squabbling. Uh, it's crazy to me. But here is uh, the National Data Buoy Center, where these are sensors on buoys all around the world in the ocean, which are sensing temperature and everything like that. The different colors just mean that some have reported and some only have historical data, and some stations haven't reported in the last hour. So these buoys right here, the reason you see all those buoys right there, those buoys are designed to sense uh, something called the El Nino phenomena, El Nino where water, warm water, travels from the east over to the west, and it really changes global weather patterns when we have El Nino, El Nino years, El Nino years. So that's kind of a cool thing. Sensor networks, right? Sensing the environment, sensor networks. And let's look at El Nino map. There we go, El Nino map. And so here are images for El Nino, El Nino map. And, uh, and it shows, right, like when we have warm water, so this is like before El Nino, with El Nino, it gets a lot warmer. And then that, bam, changes worldwide weather patterns. Kind of cool. Uh, talking about networks and uh, monitoring, of course, security cameras and connecting all the security cameras together and having wireless security cameras. So all kinds of networks there. And talking about monitoring and networks, you know, there's robotic monitoring where we could have uh, robots, drones, aerial robots flying around monitoring all kinds of stuff. So if you search for drones monitoring, you've got all kinds of different things up there. And, uh, you know, those are all interconnected to this whatever network that's being used to, to uh, monitor everything. Wildlife monitoring, using drones to, wild, to monitor wildlife. And if you search for drones monitor, monitoring us, you get information about the debate that's going on of drones over America and how much can we use drones. And drone laws are about to significantly change. There's some kind of regulation that's going to go away in 2014 or 2015. 
In which case, they predict that we're going to have thousands and thousands of drones monitoring agricultural production, whatever, you know, livestock, wild animals, forest fires, people, you know, police, all kinds of stuff. So who knows what that will look like. I think it'll be kind of cool. It'll give you something to shoot at. <laughs> of course, they'll have video, video of you doing it. You know, I was going to also talk about uh, uh, robotic uh, networks and robots that fly and cooperate, but I think I'm just going to throw that in right now. Um, so the other thing is robotic networks, and robotic networks are basically, you know, devices that are moving that are all connected together. And uh, so we talked a little bit about driverless cars and how someday, you know, if all of our cars were driverless and all of our cars could communicate, then they would be able to determine, you know, collectively, you know, how to range themselves and how fast to go and how close to be, you know, when to slow down and when to speed up. Because a lot of times what happens in traffic is you get the centipede ripple effect where, you know, there's a stop, go, stop, go, stop, go that ripples back through the traffic. So if everybody could just start moving, right? You know, if there was a way that all the cars were communicating and the software was in place within the cars to uh, coordinate all that, that'd be kind of cool. And that might sound kind of far-fetched and sci-fi, but it's already happening with other robots. It's just not with human cars. And so I want you to go watch these TED Talks. And, uh, and the first one is called VJ Kumar, Robots That Fly and Cooperate. And uh, here's that one right here. And you can see a picture of the robots flying and cooperating, you know, like right there. I mean, check that out, right? Like all those robots are coordinated. These are quadrocopters, little flying robots. They're coordinated and flying patterns. So just imagine what the battlefield of the future is going to look like. And, uh, and I'm sure you don't have to think very long nor hard before you realize you don't want to be on it. Because uh, warfare in five years, if not even less time... It's going to be a bunch of these little things zipping around, flying around, just like, you know, they'll just fly right through every human, right? They'll just be like, right through their neck, and then that person's dead. And then the battle will be over, right? We just release like a swarm of 100,000 micro-flying robots, and they'll just go and hit each of our enemy soldiers, and that's it, <laughs> you know? And we could even program them, right? Like, okay, you know, we'll just go program these things to fly into our country and then burrow in and hide. And then if there's a war, they'll burrow out. Or you, you could get kind of crazy about it. Um, you could program them to go look for a certain person, probably. You know, that's not too far off. So welcome to the wild world of the future because it is here right now. So that is uh, VJ Kumar, Robots That Fly and dot, 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 cooperate. Like, holy crap, are you kidding me? And, uh, and then the last video I want you to see is truly also mind-blowing, and it's quadrocopter pole acrobatics, where they have two quadrocopters here, and these quadrocopters balance a pole, right? So, you know, this is hard. This is hard, right, to balance a pole. These quadrocopters balance this pole right here, and then they toss it to each other, and the, the thing will, will figure out the logic to catch it, right? Like, okay, that pole is going to end up here, and this one will come down here, and they'll catch it and balance it. So they're uh, they're pretty pretty amazing, and uh, yeah, it's a crazy crazy cool new world, and um, and uh, and it's also you know tech is a tool, and it can be used for good or it can be used for bad. It can be used skillfully or it can be used unskillfully. So this is just a little bit more about networking, how everything everything is becoming connected from sensory networks. You know, things that are sensing the environment, whether it's temperature or moisture or, you know, the ocean uh, to, you know, uh, networks that keep track of everything inside of a warehouse and uh, the robotics of all of that to robots being connected and moving in unison and working in unison. We've got a lot of amazing applications of networking, which the world is starting to see. And the truly phenomenal thing about this is it wasn't that long ago, 15 years ago, where it was like really hard just to get your two computers in your own house to be able to talk to each other. So uh, networking's come a long ways, and there's a lot of really cool, interesting, um, exciting, and scary uh, uh, applications of robots that we're starting to see. We're going to few uh, applications of networking that we're starting to see. We're going to see a few more applications of networking in the next videos. <laughs>